Cancelled was recorded in front of a live studio audience. That's not true. Welcome to Cancelled. This is Chris. I'm back with Pat Dean. We, yes. We did it. We did it. We watched all ten episodes of this goddamn television show. I feel reborn. I am... Have I the I don't know the last time I was this relieved to be done with a show. <laughs> like I know I never have to watch another minute of this yeah, poor man. shit. Yeah. Particularly since these last two episodes made me furious on both really? on multiple levels. Yeah. The last one I was actually enjoying quite a bit until the end when I realized I have no idea what just happened. I don't know what I'm supposed to believe. Yeah, I I, I looked it up afterward because I was like what? And then, like, <laughs> I found no resolution. Yeah, no, I, there isn't any. It's horseshit. We'll get to it. We'll get to, we'll get to the second episode. How are you, uh, Mr. Dean? I'm good. Um, I'm feeling good. Yeah. And I'm, every once in a while, I wake up, and I'm like, you know what? I think I'll be okay. And this is one of those days. Well, that's uh. I woke up. I, pee- I peed for, like, a minute. <laughs> and then I was like, why am I? Oh, right. And I remember what I did last night. Sure. I was like, eh. that- being an adult rules. Sometimes... You wake up and you think it's going to be okay. Yeah. That statement is both uplifting and a complete bummer. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Well, because usually it's like uh, the times I feel most bad uh, emotionally are usually like kind of towards the end of the night. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And so like when I wake up, I'm like, Because if I remember like. Why did I feel depressed last night? Oh, oh. right. <laughs> so every once in a while, I'll wake up and be like. Oh, I felt good last night. That means yeah, I feel yeah. good tonight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I had a blast last night. Uh, I didn't know what I did. You had shows. Just at... stayed up late. No, well, that's always fun. Yeah. Uh, you uh, you did a show at the Valve, or, or somebody at least you were present where they ate hot peppers before. Dawn yeah. Broke. So yeah, we were discussing this beforehand. So on Friday night at the Velveeta Room, celebrating 31 years of live uncensored stand-up comedy, we did this show uh, where comics ate hot peppers and then told jokes. So we, I had done that show at a different venue, and it was super fun. So I was like, yeah, let's do it here. And it was like a complete disaster. It was really funny to watch. Sure. But uh, people were like chugging milk and like vomiting and stuff. And my waitress, Lindsay, was so mad. <laughs> she, oh, I can see the little mad Lindsay was. First of all, hates milk. <laughs> Like just doesn't just like the it. The idea of the milk. idea of it, and like 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 I asked her, I was like, "Hey, there's some milk next door. Do you mind grabbing?" And she was like, "I don't touch milk." It's like, <laughs> all right, it's in a bottle, but cool. I'll yeah, make yeah, yeah, James yeah. Cracks go get it or whatever. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so one one individual was um, ate uh, a lot of peppers. Ate two peppers actually. She ate one and was okay. Then ate two, and that was just disaster mode. Sure, chugged milk. Like like so, people had milk there to drink, and she just took the bottle and drank from the bottle. I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is intense. <laughs> and then she uh, spit it up all over the bar. And I was like, this fucking rules. Well, yeah, you're doing like ghost peppers. We were talking about this before. You're not just supposed to eat those. I guess not. Like as is. Well, we proved it that night. For starters, that is a a plant's defense mechanism. (laughs) It is... It is like it's so that if if an animal eats it, they train the species over time to oh, not man. eat those fucking peppers. I never thought about it like that. Yeah. How come all plants aren't super like spicy? Then I feel like they should all. Well, they all have different ones. Some have die, thorns. Yeah. Some have whatever. Right? There's what about different broccoli? Parts. Broccoli is helpless. It's delicious. Broccoli's okay. We're supposed actually. to eat it. Yeah, I like broccoli. A nice steamed broccoli. Mwah. I've gotten a, when I was a young man. I really did not like broccoli, and then as I grew up, I was what's like, your That's what's cool. your like general vegetable stance, Pat Dean? Oof. You don't strike me as a vegetable dude. Here's the deal. Okay, I enjoy vegetables. I I actually like healthy food. I think it tastes great. Okay. However, between that and a Big Mac, I'm fucking with the Big Mac. <laughs> so whatever's on a Big Mac, right? You know what I mean. So sure. it's like I've done stuff where, and I've even cooked. I've started to cook for myself a little bit now. Uh, and then it's always as good, and I'm like, this is pretty healthy. And then, like an hour later, I'm like, I want to have sex with a fudge Sunday. <laughs> like, I don't want. I want to stick my dick into this right. ice cream. You don't want to eat it. I want to start a family with this fucking ice cream. <laughs> like, I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> so unhealthy food always wins. Yeah, I get it. Uh, uh, kind of explains a lot about me. <laughs> let's get into this fucking show, huh? episode nine. Yeah. I stopped writing down the names. This episode... Timeless, I think it was called. Coin ABC.com. Sure, I'll believe you. Yeah. Um, I, so, here's... All right. There is someone is... Well, here's the thing. Someone is killing women, right? Yeah. Always women. 
Sure. There's three of them at a time. We fight. Well, it's going to reveal a bunch of shit. It opens with a, a people in a park and another terrible vo- voiceover about predators and packs and blah, blah, <laughs> fucking blah, blah, blah. And then uh, this guy's dog runs off into the woods. He goes chasing after his dog and there's a body. And at this point that I find this show to be too gross. It's and gross. Here's the thing. I watch a lot of horror movies. I'm okay with gore. Like, I'm actually fine with it. There was a time where, like, when you're, like, 13 or whatever, you try to find the goriest movie. Yeah. Fine, sure. right? But, like, I'm watching ABC television, and suddenly there is, like, very graphic wounds on this body. Brains and stuff, it's too, later on. Yeah, up. it's pretty intense. Um, I was eating a chicken sandwich. <laughs> it's like, why am, I, why am I doing this? This is just a waste. I was for sure stoned, by the way, when I watched these episodes. Oh, nice. Back. Oh, well, there's also, yeah, the, the drug use. Yeah. Well, I needed it. But I knew going in, I was like, I can't. I just, I'm going to have to be high before I watch either of these things. I was like a little hungover, and I was like, no, I'm not doing this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so they go to the coroner, right? And we meet the actual coroner this time. Not the, or the medical examiner, whatever his name is. Not the assistant that they always get the information the from. The horn dog. The horn dog. The actual guy. Yeah. And he is... Clearly a creep. There's a couple creep moments in this show, in this episode specifically, the mom. So yeah. we find out the medical examiner's mom is the one killing these people. Uh, we'll tell you why later. And he's helping her cover it up by, like, misdiagnosing the yeah. fucking bodies or whatever. And we see her at one point. The uh, uh, Perry Gabriel Union goes to, like, talk to her because she worked with one of the girls that's missing or whatever. And she just goes, like... You're so beautiful. Yeah, your skin is your skin. radiant. If you have that, ex- if you have that experience, you should be able to call nine one one and just be like, "Yeah, um, we got a creep. <laughs> There's like a real creep here." <laughs> and then they should go like, "You should have to like provide alibis for shit." If yeah. you're that creepy of a person, like the police should be involved. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Where it's just like when she says that, you're just like, "Oh man, this is not." going to end well at all yeah, when this weird vampire lady is talking about your skin or whatever. Question about this woman. All right. So here's the pre- all right. So here's the thing. She is older um but she looks kind of young in the face. She doesn't Young-ish, even look yeah. that young, but no. I guess younger than she should be. Yeah. Um and we find out that she is maintaining her youth by eating pineal gland or the pituitary gland one of the glands yeah. from human beings and that in the dumbest fucking moment when they're having dinner and the dad is like well you know if you eat that from a live animal it can keep you young says says what says what science Who's, says that yeah if, who you, says that you just made that the fuck up and that's fine this is a fictional show but like you're supposed to be the doctor yeah you shouldn't fall for this kind of stuff <laughs> like you're stooping to cold shack's level right now doctor please stop <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um so she's eating these uh glands from humans so what we find out is her face looks real young, but really she's wearing a wig and her body's real fucking old because her old ass boyfriend sees her at one point or yeah. another. Um, so I'm like, oh, okay. The story is this is a human woman who eats these pineal glands to stay young and she has managed to do so whatever. Yeah. So it's like Oldest a- story around. <laughs> but then at the end, we find out she's a monster. Yeah, she's an actual monster. They pull her like teeth out, and she's got fucking monster teeth. Like, yeah. not like oh, some kind of jaggedy. Te- she's got rows of Straight monster on. teeth, yeah. right? Like, you and what is a monster? She is eating through people's faces, right? At one point, we find out these bodies. She is eating through the face bones, through the nose, directly into the brain, right? Yeah. She is then shot by her son because the son's like, I can't keep killing people for you, or whatever. Took him long enough. Took him multiple women. Yeah. <laughs> taking him. Like several centuries. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, here's my thing. Is he also part monster? The monster yeah. monster. Is he part monster? I think so. And I would also like to add, they shot her. He shot her. She's dead. Police have shown up. Why is no one reacting to the fact that they have killed and have physical proof of monsters? At this point, <laughs> physical proof. I believe this is... I think the second time in the show, I think it's been several times that they've had physical proof. Physical of, evidence of monsters. You have the corpse of a monster in front of you. Yeah. The next episode should start with, like, headline, monster found, reported yeah. attacked by monster Women, or whatever. Woman with monster teeth found. Son creepy. That should be the headline. <laughs> well, I, well, one thing I wanted to ask, so the, 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 the her son, is he being kept alive? For no, a- that's my thing. I think the son is just young. 
I think because I don't know because so, thirty five because oh it's sorry because it's just like, it's fine. like we're it, jumping ahead but it's like fine there's no this story all over the fucking so, place because he they exhume what I be, what's supposed to be his brother right that that guy yeah so if he was dead thirty five years ago no they exhume was it the brother they exhume or the yeah it is the brother. I think it's the brother it's the brother they exhume yeah 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 yeah, yeah so correct yeah. I get you so maybe I never even really thought about that but the, he. Ex- he displays no monsterism. No. And as far as we know, is not eating people. He touches a brain really creepily, but other he than that. Also, he's trying to fuck his mom. That's creepy yeah, enough. Yeah, that's a whole other. There's a very sexual element to their relationship that's, yeah. that's uncomfortable. Which, as erotic as it is, it's like. <laughs> sure, as popular as it is on Pornhub. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's whatever. Um, he is. Like the most sweaty, guilty <laughs> asshole you've ever seen. Yeah. The second they show up to the fuck, like the reporter show, hi, we're a cold check from the fucking beacon or whatever. He's just like, I, 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 oh, I guess you're right. Like he's yeah. terrible. I'm surprised he didn't hiss like a snake. I would also like to tell, say this about cold check. He's got no poker face whatsoever, <laughs> right? <laughs> The medical examiner guy is is lying on these reports to cover up making murders look like suicides or accidents or whatever to cover up for the mom, right? Uh, our uh, coroner assistant, the guy that keep you know the black horn dog, yeah, uh, has called Kolchak to be like, look, you check into these things. Something's not right. I'm finding this, this, and this. So the reporter's like, how did you know to ask these questions? Kolchak stares straight at fucking black horn dog and goes, uh. Oh, I found this other thing. Like the most obvious, like like tell to the point where corner guy looks over and is like, "Why are you looking at?" And still nothing. They yeah, just don't get Jack, it. Come on, stop. Yeah. Well, what I liked about this episode is that it was like definitely that guy's chance to shine. The cor- I don't even remember yeah, what his yeah, name yeah, is yeah, the, the, yeah. the corner to be like, uh, and like at first he kind of does, but he still manages to get in a creepy line <laughs> where he's like, "I guess I just have a lot of." Looks at Perry, imagination. Yeah. And it's like, buddy, come on. <laughs> well, Your that- boss is covering up serial killers. Can you stop trying to get pussy? <laughs> Please. I would like to add that line is in repl- is in response kind of to uh, – she asked Kolchak why he can figure this out but the coroner couldn't, oh, right? Oh, sure, yeah. And he says uh, because he lacks imagination. Good. He's a doctor. He's a coroner. He's not supposed, He's to. Not supposed to be imagining things. Just jump to the conclusion, even though it's correct, of a vampire murder. You you can't do that <laughs> if you're a doctor. Yeah, it's so dumb. Um, so what we find out is that every, like they go to the records uh, department of the Beacon at the or the newspaper there, and it's Stephen Tobolowsky, by the way, the great Stephen Tobolowsky, yep. who can play like – the nicest man or the creepiest fucking dude on the planet. So interesting. And kind of nowhere in between. Those are like <laughs> just where his roles lie. Yeah. He's either the dude in fucking um, Groundhog's Day yeah. where he's like, hi, neighbor or whatever. Or he's this guy who's just a newspaper reporter, but it's also somehow very creepy. Some There's something up with this guy because his dis- – anytime an older person has extreme disdain for the internet, I'm yeah. always like, what is your deal exactly? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's some terrible shit on there, but there's some – it's, it's got a lot of knowledge. He also <laughs> says the dumbest shit, too, where he's like, we have to keep these because this information isn't found on your internet or whatever. I'm like, could no, be. Not. It also could be. I get this. These are old copies of like newspapers from the 1800s or whatever. You can scan them, put them on the internet. They're there forever. Not what if there's deal. a fire? What if, just over time, these fucking books disintegrate because that's what happens to paper? <laughs> just put a scan and put them on the internet, you fucking idiot. Hey, he made me mad, too. I feel like no one on this – no one involved with this show knows how the internet works because like there's that time early – I think maybe in the pilot where like they look up like Carl Kolchak and then like they click on a thing and it's just like file not found. Yeah. It's like that's not how the internet works. So then this guy being like – like, well, if there's no one around to preserve this, how will we know? And it's like, well, that's what the internet kind of is. Right. It's like you're – yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, what we find out from him is that he's like, uh, you know, I rem- – this murder matches an old murder from 1970 and it matches it almost exactly. And it was three girls and just like uh, – well, it was three girls that went missing instead of just the one, right? What happens is the girl goes missing. Later on, her body is found as a pattern, right? Yeah. With her fucking face being bitten off and her brain's missing. Um, so she goes back. Uh, so they go back and they're like, well, uh, that was – in the laziest bit of writing too, by the way, because they do that and like, oh, well, that's fucking weird. And he goes to like talk to the cop that handled the case in the 70s or whatever. They get a call back and the guy's like, oh, by the way, 
it goes back. I, I just thought, why not look back further? And it turns out it was also there. Why did you have to make that two scenes? Why couldn't you have just gotten through that when you <laughs> went there once? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you have to fill time by just having them go back to the same place and just look at older books. Yeah. This show seems to think it's very interesting to just look at old books. <laughs> it's just like action scene. Like let's look at some records. Well, okay. I guess we will. Uh, what I find out is that was, so it was one in 1970. Every 35 years this happens. Yeah. Now, they make no effort to explain why this pituitary eating lasts for 35 years. Yeah. Uh, there's no effort made to explain how old this woman is. We see some pictures of her from the past. Yeah. They look like kind of sepia tone, maybe World War II era pictures or something like that. But that's not that old. Yeah. Like, you would think they'd have had her like <laughs> – like, you know, when you go to the carnival and you take, like, an old-timey photo with, like, oh, I'm yeah. a cowboy yeah, with a big yeah, bag yeah, of money yeah. or something. Like, just – you might as well have just done that. We have one of those at home, like, from when I was, like, 10. And, like, I remember one time as an adult looking at it and being like, why do we do this? Oh, like, I for sure have one from when I was a kid <laughs> as well. And it's like – I'm, like, you know, I got, like, a gun or whatever. And my sister's, like – like a bar floozy, you know what I mean? Like yeah, those, like yeah, yeah, old timey, yeah. like the hairs up, like the yeah, like in a saloon or something. Yeah, yeah, and they're they're yeah. sitting on the piano for some reason. Yeah, yeah it's weird. Like, she's also a child. Why are you doing this? It's really weird. Yeah, I look back at it. I'm just like, this is so silly. I, w- I wonder why we did this. Like, it is an wow. odd. It's. I don't. I guess parents like it. I don't know. It's weird. Oh, yes. I don't think we ever actually like put it out anywhere. Like I don't think it was ever displayed. I remember taking the picture, and then that was it. Yeah. Um. So. Here's another – there's so many creepy fucking moments, right? So they go talk to the cop from the 70s about the the murders that took place then, right? Yeah. And the cop says when – like uh, – and the cop basically says like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I knew who did it. But he ended up killing himself and we were never able to really prove it. But we think it was this guy, this doctor who turns out to be what I thought was current coroner's father. But I think turns out to be current coroner's brother. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the cop's like, why are you so interested in this case? And he goes, oh, well, there's a case that's happening now that's very similar. And I thought maybe it was the same guy. And uh, he says – the cop says, if the same guy is going around killing young girls at his age, he's got a hell of a lot more energy than I do. Yeah. Don't say that like uh, kudos, a murderer. Yeah, it's a like, weird. It, it was too, way too like good for him. Believe me, if I was 10 years younger, I'd be out there murdering <laughs> women too. Uh, yeah. Well, another weird thing – is that maybe I just am rem- remembering this strange, but, like, it looked like when he was talking to him, the detective, like, wasn't looking at him. The whole time. He was looking <laughs> no, off to the side, but he I, I couldn't – but I don't think he had a lazy eye. I think he just wasn't, he looking, wasn't looking at, at the culture. actor. Yeah, it was yeah. so weird. It was very weirdly staged. I don't yeah. know what they were going for there, but I noticed that, too. I will say that I am a total sucker for any time in a, uh, uh, a, a story like this. Uh, what, 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 uh, Black, I don't know the word for it, but whenever they try to find, like, the detective, where it's like, oh, this same thing happened 50 years ago. Yeah, and they yeah. track down the retired detective. It's like, yeah, I remember that case. I'm always yeah, like, oh, oh, man, geez. this is getting intense. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just such a sucker for it. I don't know why. No, I get that. It works. A procedural. That's what it is. When it's a procedural and they find a uh, the, the old retired detective who's just. Yeah, it it's uh, always says some shit like, <laughs> some, you know, uh, some cases you can't forget. Or yeah, some bullshit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we yeah. closed the case. Yeah, he's like, I closed 200 homicides in my time. But this one keeps me up at night or some bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I will say that. I bet that is kind of a weird thing to just sort of like reflect on. Like I bet it must be so odd to be a detective like that and then like you're retired and then you're just sitting around and you're like, God damn, I saw some wild shit. <laughs> like just sitting around like, wow, I'm trying to enjoy my iced tea on my front porch right. after a long life of working. Trying to, like, try to make this ship in a bottle but oh. <laughs> keep picturing <laughs> Some retiree shit. Like oh, wow. That, that woman walking your dog looks just like that woman's body I found 15 years <laughs> yeah, ago. It's yeah, like, wow, yeah. this is bringing back a lot of unpleasant memories. Uh, um, the other thing I noticed that happens a lot in this episode is they purposely refer, when they don't know who the killer is, they purposely refer to him as he or him. Yeah. But we know it's a woman. But they, it's to the, it, it's like a hundred times. It's so many point time, like times at a, a point I was just like, all right, I get it. Yeah. We, it's misdirection. But here's the problem. It's not misdirection. We know we who know the fucking who is. killer is yeah. 20 minutes in the episode. Like, yeah. And not because we're smart. They just tell us who it is. They're showing us. They're showing us There's who no, it is. We're using no clues, no yeah. deductive reasoning. It's, 
you filmed this. Yeah. And now we're seeing it. <laughs> and the son is getting more and more reckless. So they find yeah, out. It does really unravel immediately. Oh, immediately. To, and then what they do when they realize there's three murders every time, they go like uh, the coroner uh, assistant is like, you know, when he said that, I found like I went looking through some cases and I found another one. They mis- Somebody mislabeled this one like a, a suicide or something. But it's just clearly a full on hum. Like it's just the exact same. Yeah. Like homicide, whatever, like uh, MO or whatever. And as soon as he says it, the guy's like, oh, I must I, 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 I put the wrong file in it or whatever. And it's like, nah, I get it, dude. I get it. You're real nervous. You're a real nervous wreck. Um, the other thing that's horrifying about this episode, what they're doing to kill these women is they're injecting them with anesthesia that just paralyzes them oh, but yes. keeps them alive. So when their faces are eaten off, they can, yeah. they're feeling everything. They just can't scream, right? Yeah. Which is a fucking nightmare. I don't know why they needed that. They did. <laughs> well, I guess they need her them to be alive or something. But like, oh, okay. It completely. The son is now a like goes from being just a fucked up person covering up their mom's murders to a willing participant in horrible torture. Yeah. So like. No, I don't like him either. No. Well, the problem, I guess, with the show is that no one's likable. No one. Like, <laughs> there's just, no there's one. not a single, even like on the old Kolchak, even when Kolchak was being a jerk, he was still kind of, there's still, still something a about him. jerk, yeah. I think because maybe he was sort of this ornery older guy, so you're like, oh, this is funny. And then like Vicenza was so likable that like, it's like whatever. But on this show, there just, there just isn't that. And I don't know. I'm not somebody who needs... <clears throat> You know, necessarily every character to be super likable, but at least have one. Yeah, I gotta have somebody to root <laughs> for. One guy I hate all these assholes. That I'm like, wow, everyone's a dick except for this guy. Right. And then you're like, oh, wow. So that when that guy steps up, you're like, oh, cool. This guy's the one guy I like is doing something. But now we don't like anyone. No. No one is like, is like and then uh, – the mom sets her sights on Gabrielle Union. She's going to kill Gabrielle Union because she thinks that the reporters – if she – apparently her logic is if I kill this reporter, the rest of them will stop asking questions. Yeah, that's definitely what happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Definitely, you killed you, my friend, so I'm going to stop looking into if this. If you ever want a reporter or a cop to get off your case – Kill one of them. And then they're like, oh, okay, well, never mind. <laughs> also, there's a moment where oh, – I, I don't know why this was so weird to me, but when she ha- – so uh, Gabrielle Union has dinner. She has her mom and dad over for dinner mostly because – and it, she writes it to be like – it's written to be like, you know, I, they're like, why well, you know, you never have us over or whatever. And she's like, oh, this story I'm working on, it's like young girls being killed and it really, I don't know, makes me remember how vulnerable I am or whatever. Sure. Uh, but they're eating asabuco. It's really weird. And I don't know why that's so weird, but if you don't know, Asabuco is like veal shank. So it's a big hunk of meat with a big fucking bone stuck in it. So they're having this like moment of vulnerability between a daughter and her parents, but they're also just eating like big red fucking yeah, meat. Over the most visceral meal you <laughs> yeah, possibly yeah, yeah. have. Also, her mom looked to be about, what would you say, 10 years older than her? Maybe 12? Yeah. That it woman really, was very young. It's one of those things where you're like, well, uh, all right, I guess. <laughs> and wouldn't it be a moment to have a thing where she's like – so the the play so the, the the play on the idea of this monster who is uh, going to these horrible lengths to maintain her youth and her beauty, which is what she, you know we're right now she's just vain and va- and that's why she's doing all this. Wouldn't that be a moment to have a conversation about the impossible beauty standards women are held to, and your mother oh, yeah, and, yeah. The, and the mom being like, "It takes me fucking forty five minutes to do this, and I got to put serums and blah 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 blah." Yeah, uh, no, she's just never never addressed that she's her older sister. It is interesting that there are there's just no social commentary whatsoever on the show. Nothing. <laughs> Which is you'd think like if you're a reporter and you're you're learning about all different groups of people, like you'd think like you'd have some sort of but no no comment also let me ask you this yeah the fucking voiceovers in the original show his voiceovers were what he was writing the story about even though half the time he knew he couldn't turn the story in right so is that what these voiceovers are are? are these what he's publishing in that newspaper by the way it's kind of weird because like if if, if, because all of his if that's the case, all of his articles are going to be like esoteric bullshit. Yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah the yeah. first three paragraphs are just musings on death. That you're like, what the <laughs> fuck am I reading? Like, yeah, I just yeah. tell me who won last night. Like, <laughs> what? So 
I'm in a fantasy league. Come on, the mom Jack. sets the most obvious trap in the world for Gabriel Union in which yeah. she just calls her and she's like, oh, hey, by the way, I think I remembered something about that girl's death. Can you come to my house or whatever? When Gabriel Union shows up, she answers the door very obviously just holding something <laughs> behind her back. The second she, time. She's just holding. Yeah. Like, a, like you can – there's no – no one holds one hand behind their back unless they're hiding something. Why That's else how would she you answers the door. Yeah. It's the craziest moment. You're on a butler from the 1800s. <laughs> like there's no way. Yeah. And I got – this made me laugh too. So she she sticks uh, Gabrielle Union with the needle, right? Yeah. And uh, you would think – like what I found very funny about this is it's a very slow acting – anesthetic so gabriel union has time to like get off a few lines punch the mom <laughs> yeah. run away like she looks at the sun she's like oh you're just cool with this you're just gonna let this happen like she I, literally is her reaction yeah. to the sun uh she pops the mom in the face she gets like kind of gets almost away like i don't know why she doesn't go for the door as opposed to down the hallway seemed like an odd move i mean you know she likes to do things a little bit different we do things different on the show here in the There's night stalker so, so many weird uh the mom comes in. I guess Gabriel Union's words have gotten to the son. The son, when she's about to eat Gabriel Union, the son shoots her in the back. What happens to the son again? He goes to jail. He does. Okay, I, 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 I can't remember. To, we don't. You know, I don't. He might get off on a. Like, but he does get arrested. Something get arrested. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We see him getting like okay. walked to the the police car. But in a wildly crazier fucking, uh, these people can just walk through crime scenes moments. He shoots a mom in the back. Right. Mm-hmm. They uh, they have – I don't know how the cops have gotten there. I don't remember if Kolchak called them. Whatever reason, the cops are already on their way. So the cops show up like moments after the gunshot. Like he's still standing there with the gun. The cops show up. He drops the gun on the ground. Kolchak runs past the two cops over to Gabriel Union. No, the cops would have shot him. The co- they, 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 she just runs into not a, not even a crime scene to an active crime. Yeah, it is currently going on, and the cops are just like, oh, they don't even address him. I guess at this point they're just like, uh, probably like a rookie cop was like, hey, what the? And then the other cops were like, that's cool. It's just what he does. <laughs> oh, that's oh, that's Carl well, Kolchak. Yeah. We let him do this for some reason. The other thing that's happening here is that uh, the old lady, the mom, has a, a, a old boyfriend named Hugh who at one point sees her while she's getting dressed and learns, like, oh, she's actually much older than she, like, her skin is saggy and veiny. Her body's, like, really, really old. Wears a wig. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, you see him, and you think he's going to be like, ooh, like, uh, like, we can fuck with our clothes on or something. But, like, uh, he, he in turn, actually, though, is very nice. Right? He sees her. He's like, like, look, I want to talk to you about something. You know, I know your secret. I saw you undressing, and I want you to know you don't have to hide yeah. Your body for me, like I, I, you're a beautiful woman. I, we're both old, <laughs> like uh, yeah, really. You know, like, but he just has a moment of like, uh, you know. As, so uh, we're like, oh, he's nice. He's fucking dead immediately. Immediately, because she, uh, the mom is gonna frame Hugh for the murders. I guess because she, this would have been her third, and then she wouldn't have to do it for another thirty five years or yeah. something theoretically. Um, but that is just so much attention on this woman, where it's like, hey, there's been like. Several murders that are all linked directly to you. you. Yes. Every person they found is like works for her or is their boyfriend. Like there's no – you would think they just pick random people off the street. Like – Yeah. Why does it even have to be someone someone you know know so well? It's insane. But yeah. So the cops show up. uh, Ed Kolchak just runs right past them, which really made me fucking laugh. Uh, It is – and then we see like old they the cops like open up a, a photo album, they find all these old pictures of this woman looking exactly the same. And it's like, well, here's an idea, lady. Maybe don't keep those fucking pictures. If you're trying to hide <laughs> the most fucked up fucking obvious thing in the world, don't keep the evidence in a photo book. Yeah. It's it's, it's crazy. Uh terrible episode. Which leads into Episode 10. What's the frequency, Colchak? What's the frequency? Uh, what's the frequency, Colchak? <laughs> yeah. I like, I like, uh, like beat music fucking. What's the frequency, Colchak? <laughs> hey. What's that REM song? Yeah. Oh, right, what's right. What's the frequency, right. Kenneth? Yeah, 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 I was yeah, thinking yeah, of that yeah, song yeah, the whole yeah. time and I was kind of annoyed because, like, I don't know how that song goes beyond what's the frequency, <laughs> Kenneth? So I was just doing that over and over and over going, what's the frequency, Colchak? And I was like, I don't really like this song. So <laughs> So you like this one? Well, I, I there was a time I liked it. Sure. Um, first off, it opens with Gabriel Union doing the voiceover Wait and a minute. not Kolchak. Yeah. And I was like, well, 
why? And my fault was like, oh, maybe Kolchek dies. I thought it was going to be focused just on her. Like he was going to go in Or this is a, a Gabrielle Union episode. Not the case. No. Uh, no it, reason. It's her birthday. That's about it. About I, I don't know why if that's a special present for her. Um, well, what I thought was funny is that so like he goes – She's having like a surprise birthday party, and of course she knows it's happening because she's a reporter. And Which I don't buy for one second. I know. You do the, not have the fucking ability to suss that out. The one time she uses her like deductive reasoning skills to be like, oh, there's a surprise party. Whereas yeah, yeah. it's like, you've seen killer dogs and vampires, and you still don't <laughs> believe in the supernatural, but okay. Uh, but yeah, she goes to Kolchak to be like, hey, you coming to the surprise party they're throwing for me? And he's like, huh? <laughs> he doesn't even go like, oh, I'm busy or I don't really do parties. He's just not he just invited. Does it. Yeah, <laughs> no they, one wanted him there. He straight up didn't invite him to the party, which I thought was fucking great. Yeah, that ruled. Um, I thought the opening, once we get past the voiceover, was creepy and good as shit. Oh, yeah, when he shows – when the guy breaks So this dude wakes yeah. up in a fucking wheelchair, right? And oh, sorry. Yeah, that wheel- part. Yeah, he's yeah, chained part. to this wheelchair. He's like, what the fuck's going on? I get, what's happening here? And then somebody like rolls him into a hallway – and there's like a door at the far end of the hallway, and yeah. there's all these scratch marks on the wall. And uh, whoever is behind him takes this broom and like shuffleboards him towards this open door, where he's like screaming, screaming. He's like, you can realize the the scratch marks on the walls are all the people before him whose hands have been pushed down this hallway, scraping into the string. Yeah. And then he's like a fucking explosion of blood. Uh, and then like that's it. And I was like, oh, what the fuck is this? This yeah. is like some good creepy shit. Um, and there's a bunch of that that I found relatively interesting sure. until the end when none of it matters or makes any fucking sense at all. Yeah, it was a, a pretty cool intro just because you, you really are like, what what could this possibly be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, it's just a monster in the hole. Like, what's going on? And then I also kind of like – so basically what happens is uh, the great Pat Healy, by the way, who yep. plays the uh, – the he's in a bunch of shit. Um, yeah. But uh, he uh, shows up at Kolchak's desk. And he's like, what are my answers? And he's like, what? And he's like, you've been sending me coded messages through your newspapers. I want to know what the, me- like, what the, uh, the message is, what, yeah. the, what my answers are. And Kolchak's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And he goes, I'm 20. I was 22. You were 23 or some shit like that. Yeah, he right? says like a number. Right. What we find out is he knew Kolchak from the mental institution. Uh, when Kolchak was in a mental institution after he was blamed for killing his wife, um, and now he's this crazy dude who thinks he – that Kolchak has been sending him coded messages. He fucking hits Kolchak over the head and uh, Kolchak wakes up in the fucking wheelchair, right? And now the whole episode is Kolchak in this wheelchair and this crazy guy saying that there's an – it's the old man that lives down in, in that room and he never leaves that room. He lives in the light switch. I thought the – Crazy ramblings were well written. Yeah. Well, it was written by goddamn uh, Mr. Breaking Bad, Vince, whatever. Oh, is it? Yeah. I didn't realize. I didn't yeah, look at the credit. Yeah, he, uh, he wrote this episode. And uh, I guess he was supposed to write other ones. Oh. Um, well, that's enough. Well, I looked, I looked all this stuff up after the fact, and I was like, oh, holy shit. Because I guess – we talked about this in the old one, uh, the old uh, Kolchak series that we did and in other, epi- in other episodes. But uh, I guess Kolchak was like a – huge influence on the x-files mm-hmm. and so he i guess when he found out that they were doing a remake of it he was like well f- hell yeah let's do this yeah, yeah and yeah. so i think what i like about these two episodes these are probably my two favorite ones that we've gotten mm-hmm. because they actually fu- they finally fully embrace the like okay let's just do a monster of the week thing. yeah 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 absolutely yeah so I, that i really enjoyed that it was like Oh wow, it's a monster in a hallway, or like, oh, it's like a vampire lady who I guess is a vampire. Which mm. uh, also I didn't really get that part, but whatever. Yeah. So it's like, uh, yeah, I, I, I did like that part. So yeah, that's the reason why this was the best written one. This was written by that guy. By the way, I wrote uh, when she said when uh, Gabrielle Union says that she's like they can't hide a, a surprise party for me. I wrote like, what if it's not a surprise party? What if it's just an intervention for them to get her to quit being a reporter? <laughs> She shows up like, look, you're just not good at this. Look, you, you, or you're constantly getting captured. And, like, there's all this bad stuff happening all the time. And uh, you're so clearly th- not happy. Like, you're not a happy person. So this guy is telling Kolchak all this crazy shit. There's an old man. He lives in a light switch, but sometimes he gets in my head yeah. and it hurts. And then I have to, like, feed him somebody so he'll shut up or he wants me to cross. There's a yellow line painted on the floor. And it's like, if you cross that yellow line, you're his or whatever. Yeah. And it becomes a bit of... Well, is there a monster or is this guy just crazy? And I think that's an interesting angle to take because 
you've got two people that met in a mental institution. And he, he even says at one point what I thought was good was like, well, I believed you when I, you told me a monster killed your fucking wife. Why can't there also be an old guy sure, who lives yeah. on the light switch? Like, and then that's a matter of, oh, maybe Kolchak's just fucking crazy, right? Like, all these possibilities are popping up. And yep. I'm like, oh, this is fucking pretty cool. Yeah. My thing that I think is kind of interesting about that is I feel like if I was younger and I saw this thing where it's like there, there might be a monster that might not be as kind of ambiguous. If I was, like, young, I'd be like, well, that's fucking dumb. Show me the monster. And then when I got older – and like college age and shit like that, it kind of became this thing where it's like, well, you know, the more scary thing is the stuff that you come up with in your own head, whether or not it's, it's, it's like with Halloween and Michael Myers, you never find out what the hell this guy's deal is. Yeah, yeah. But then I feel like, like, you know, it's like we're middle aged gentlemen at this point in our lives. I feel like some, not always, but sometimes with stuff like that, when it's this ambiguous, sometimes it kind of annoys me. Yeah. Where I'm like, just tell me. Like, I don't <laughs> care. Well, here's the thing I like the ambiguity of it. Provided you wrap up at the end. Okay, like, yeah. Sure. This episode playing with that. What is it? What is it? Is it this? Is it this? If you give me a satisfactory ending to that, then I'm like, that was a fun ride. Sure. I was either right or I was wrong. Whatever. All of that's good. We don't get that here, but uh, yeah, it isn't. It, it isn't infuriating when it makes you guess. And then you finally go, okay, I think it is or it isn't. And then at the end, you're like, oh, you didn't well, know either, you fucking dickhead. No one that's knows. What it is. Yeah. They didn't know, so they just didn't write a fucking ending. It's like the last two seasons of Lost. It's like you guys <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just as confused as we are. Yeah, yeah, you piece of shit. Oh, now there's a bear. Fuck you. Uh, um, <laughs> so now Kolchak is being held hostage in his, uh, by this crazy person who, who's demanding these answers that he can't give him. But he basically tricks him into telling his story. And he's like, so you got this coded message from me. And um, I didn't even know I was writing this code. It's coming through the fucking ether or whatever. So the only way for me to get you your answers is for you to fucking tell me your story. I'll write it. We'll get the code from there. Uh, he also tells him at one point he tricks him into uh, – He's like, look, I got all kinds of stuff in my trunk. I got all the equipment to, f- to fight the old man, how he would think he would have that. He's like, but go to the trunk and get it because uh, the guy stole Kolchak's car yeah. and when he knocked him out and drove him back there in his car. So he's got his car. So he's like, go to the trunk and get all my equipment. Uh, and he's going to use that as an opportunity to like escape. But he gets to the door and there's just like that deadbolt chain and Kolchak's like, ah. Like, that's literally the only thing that's stopping him is, like, the thinnest chain. And, like, yeah, I would have – also, just scream, man. Scream a lot. Yeah, Break what a are window. Doing? What are you doing? He luckily, when he opens the door, someone's walking up and he's like, hey, hey, dude, you got to help me. I mean, I held hostage here or whatever. We don't have a lot of time. The guy walking up turns out to be Kolchek's uh, – uh, not cold check. It turns out to be the crazy guy's like caseworker from the mental institution or yeah. whatever. And uh, <laughs> fucking crazy doing guy. A terrible job, by the way. Clearly, you're letting this man. <laughs> this man lives in an apartment in, in a house, rather a fairly large house, by the way. Yeah. In Los Angeles, but yeah. you know how expensive that would be. Huge house. Yeah. Even if it's in a rundown neighborhood, it's still a giant piece of property. Um, that is just like uh, hoarded with newspapers. Yeah. And uh. Murder victims. Yep. So, like, and, I don't and know. And a yellow line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A mysterious kind of, line and a, a closed door. A, a, a wheelchair that has handcuffs <laughs> on the wrists and ankles. That's There's just part of the blood on there, too. <laughs> Lots like, of it. Well, now, so I have a lot of questions about the blood. Yeah. Anyway, so just to wrap that part up, uh, <laughs> fucking crazy guy tases the caseworker brings him inside, and now – and he basically tells Kolchak, like, look, you fucked up. You woke up the old man by bringing this dude into it, so now I got to feed him to the old man down the hallway. Thanks. He pushes him in the chair down the hall. The door's open. He hears this horrible screaming and huge splash of blood on the chair. The next thing we come back, uh, Pat Healy's cleaning the chair off of the blood. Pat Healy has no blood on him. None. Right? So – Okay, let's just jump to the end for a minute and work sure. our way back. Yeah, yeah. What is there a monster at the end of the hallway, or is there not? I feel like it's supposed to be a metaphor or something. Because it definitely is supposed to be some bullshit about if you touch the darkness too much or whatever. And mental, yeah, mental health and stuff like that is kind of what I took away from it. But I guess like I think there it's one of those things where it's like there is a monster at the end of the hall, and it's ignorance about. Insanity or something yeah, yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. but so, but like, at, but, but what uh, is actually physically killing the people at the end of the saying, hallway? Is that Those like are, there are dead bodies? Something at, is killing them. At a certain point, you do have to go. Okay, like you guys are all getting what this metaphor is. Let's 
the big reveal of what it actually is. No, it's not a monster. It's yeah. him doing it. Or no, there's it's a crazy monster, monster there. That lived that long. Like what monsters is... exist in this reality, by the Wait, way. Wait, by the way, we have seen them multiple times. So yeah. It could easily be a monster. Um, at one point, Gabriel Union shows up because uh, he never shows up to the birthday party. But like. He wasn't invited, so I don't know why that's a big thing. Yeah. Jane is fucking hammered off of, like, Bud Light Limes or some <laughs> shit. He's had, like, two of them, and he's fucking wasted. Yeah. But he keeps going, like, it's Kolchak. I don't, like, we should be checking on Kolchak. It's crazy that he's not here. And even, like, Gabrielle Union's like, I don't know if it's crazy he's not here. We barely fucking know this guy, and he's been weird the whole time. Yeah. Even Vincenzo is supposed to be his best friend. like, I don't know, maybe. It, I guess it's weird. Yeah. Could not be. Like, the guy that got him the job. It's like, yeah, no, he's kind of a dick now. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, like, yeah, he's not really a party guy, and also, like, he may have killed his wife. I don't know. We're still kind of suspicious about that. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's still kind of up in the air on that one. <laughs> so she shows up, right? And... He's like, we got to get out of here quick. This guy's got a gun. He's crazy. He, he tells her, no, get out of here. Call the cops, right? Just yeah. go call the cops. Uh, she, she's like, I'm not leaving without you. So she climbs in through the window. She does call the cops on her phone, right? And then Pat Healy shows up. So she hides for a minute. Kolchak goes back out. There's a big fight because Kolchak has written the note and has written the story. And the message that was coded in it was cross the yellow line. Uh, and Patty was like, why do you want me to cross the other line? He'll kill me if I cross the other line. You're trying to get me killed, blah, blah, blah. So this is happening. He pulls out the gun, and then Gabriel Union runs in to try to save the day, gets shot in the fucking stomach. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's why she's doing a voiceover. She's going to die. Col- she has gotten Kolchek loose from his chains when she gets through the window. Yeah. So he is able to then attack Pat Healy with a lamp and fight him up, beat him up, yeah. push him down the hall, and the- puts him in a wheelchair, pushes him down the hall into the hallway. Gabriel Union disappears. It was some sort of hallucination yeah, or whatever, yeah, right? Then how the fuck did he get out of that chair? I don't know. I think it was – I think what that was is it was clearly a vision, but I think it was like he undid it himself, but in his head was rationalizing it as her doing it. Okay. Is, is how did I, he do it himself? I don't know. He's cold. He's cold, check. He can do it. He's got powers now. I guess. You know that? That doesn't make any fucking sense at all. Well, no, because they spent no time uh, telling us he has these abilities to uh, break out of fucking handcuffs handcuffs and shit. Why would they? Uh, At one point, the uh, caseworker comes back out from down the hall, and he's like, look, I'm stabbed real bad, man. You got to call a doctor or something. I'm dying over here. And... Pat Healy's like, oh, that's the old man. Don't you understand? He's looking. He's making himself look like that. He's trying to trick you into going over there so he can eat you. And the guy, he says, like, there's a couple of moments where he goes, like, come on, cold check. And the guy, he's like, how does he know your name? Ha, see, fooled you. And he's like, no, I told him my name when he showed up. So all of it makes sense. I think, but then he disappears as well. Yeah. Right? So they're both seeing it. Yeah, I don't, it is such a weird, that's what I'm saying, this whole ambiguity thing is so infuriating sometimes because I think they meant it as like, well, it's up to the viewer to decide. But it's like, but I mean, it is. But at the same time, we said this. I've said this a few times in this podcast where if there's a difference between ambigu- ambiguity being like, oh, this is interesting. It could be this or it could be that. And the difference between that and just straight up doing a confusing ending because you didn't know how to end it. Right. And so – it's a thing where the thing that we've said before is that, like, if, if I have to do extra research to find out what happened, I feel like you didn't do your job as the storyteller. Like, you're supposed to tell me. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the, it is a two, it is an almost two way street where you're going to present it and I can come up with my own interpretation of it. Um, but at the same time, it's like, there's, there's no way, there's, you're not giving me enough clues right. to figure this out. It's not a thing where after the fact you find out, oh, there was, you know, some sort of uh, fucking gas being put in there, and that's why I was hallucinating. Yeah, yeah, Then you go, oh, okay, yeah, then if he was all gassed up, maybe he was able to do something and he can't remember. It's just, well, it's lazy writing. I would also like to add, if she was a fucking, if she was a hallucination, who called the goddamn cop? Who called the cop? She called the cops. That's why they showed up so fast. So who called the fucking cop? Doesn't make any sense. Motherfuck. Yeah, it's just a thing. And it would be easily written if they go, you know, a neighbor called the cops because he heard a gunshot. It's it's easy solutions. Right. But you're not You're not doing them. them. So I have to go by what you're presenting, and what you're presenting is a hallucination called the goddamn cops, and it makes me very mad. Yep. 
Um, well, hallucinations are doing pretty crazy stuff these also, days. Also, when that halluc- when she does show up and she starts giving him shit for not coming to the birthday party, but he's c- physically handcuffed to a wheelchair in a lunatic's house, that made me laugh so fucking hard. Yeah, it's like- She's just a complete cunt. Yeah, dude, I'm captured by a guy who thinks there's a monster in his bedroom, right. and I'm still captured. Like, yeah, this is why they come to your you're fucking You're currently party. unchaining him from a wheelchair, so, I mean, like, he doesn't have an excuse. Yeah, that really just made me laugh pretty hard. Um, also, I thought when she gets shot, and I was in the, of the belief that it was actually her, her just looking at Kolchak going, please don't let me die, please don't let me die, is fucking rough. Yeah. Imagine being him. Yeah. And you're like, I have no control over this. There's nothing I can, I can hold your hand while you die, yep. but I got nothing else. Luckily, this isn't real. Somehow. It turns out it's not real. Motherfuck. Yeah. Don't worry, Gabrielle. It's gonna, we're going to have a terrible ending. You'll be fine. Yeah, just a, a, a very odd – and, like, it's a weird way to end it, too, because it's like this ends the whole series. Right. Now, these were – now, the thing that I'm I looked I'm assuming up, these were the ones that were aired out of – or after – were not aired, right? They weren't aired, right. yeah. So these last two were not aired. Um, so, yeah, it was uh, – I don't know, though, because what I was reading – I was cause I had to look it up because, like, what the fuck am I watching? And so I looked it up, and apparently they had, like – Big plans for this series, but it got mm. shit canned. Like what they were going to have, they were going to reveal. So maybe they would have eventually revealed this in like a, like the second season, how this all happened. Um, because maybe it even was a thing where it's like in the next season, it's like, wait, what happened? Well, how did you do that? Well, I don't know. Maybe you can look into it, stuff like that. But basically, they were going to do this thing where that mark on the on your wrist was mm-hmm. like if you were like an evil person, you had it. Ooh. And uh, those uh, motorcycle guys were the the four horsemen mm-hmm. of the apocalypse okay. and all this shit. So they actually, it looked like they had some pretty interesting plans, but it's like you you waited too long. Yeah, and the stuff you actually gave us was shit. It was bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, fe- you fed us a bunch of shit, and then ex- they expected me to eat cake later. I'm yeah. not going to eat the cake. And I'd probably love got, to eat cake. Probably got shit in it. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's, and Yeah, and I'd still eat it. <laughs> That's a weird take on that. Well, you know. Um, she shows up at the house. This also annoyed me. Gabrielle Union shows up at the house, and I was like, how the fuck did she know where the house was? Uh, and she says, remember what you called and hung up? or?" Uh, you were getting that, like, somebody called you and hung up or whatever. Yeah. Well, we traced the call. What? You're the newspaper. You're not the cops. Oh, how did you trace the call? Also, like, he showed up moments after calling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but what I thought was funny at the beginning of the episode is when he's, like, uh, talking, just, like, trying to talk the guy down, and he's yeah. like, well, did you? it's, like, the worst plan ever. He's like, well, did you check in with the security guard? No, I broke in. Well, that's not going to work. We have to go check in with the security guard. Yeah. It's like, oh, Jack, I mean. <laughs> I get you're a little desperate here, but come on. For a second, I was like, oh, he's going to finally have this cool-ass plan that's going to justify everyone talking about how brilliant he is. And nope, not at all. Just let's go talk to security. So here's something else that I don't understand. Yeah. Kolchak breaks out, beats the shit out of him, push, puts him in a wheelchair, slides him down the hallway to the door. Turns around. Gabriel Union is gone. Goes down the hallway into the room, which, by the way, I thought it was going to be I thought it'd be very funny if uh, when they finally opened the door, it was just like five dudes chained to wheelchairs. Just like, hey, can somebody <laughs> he can't, every couple of days he pushes another one in here. <laughs> Just like covered in shit because they can't use the bathroom. They're just stuck in this room. Oh, that would have <laughs> That would have made me laugh really hard. That would, and that would have been a cool ending. Yeah, yeah. At least it would have been At something. least we'd have an ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the idea just would fucking really made me laugh. But he oh, opens the man. door. Uh, there's some dead bodies in there. Just at least Stan Kim, who's the, uh, the caseworker. Yeah. And then Pat Healy's on the floor dead. Yeah. But he was chained to the wheelchair when he got pushed down there. So how's he on the floor? I don't know, and this is what I'm, this is what I was saying earlier is that it's not uh, it's, it's it's not the kind of writing where you go like this is going to make me think about this for a while and come with my own conclusion. There's no status. There's no way for us we, if we sat here for two hours and debated it, we couldn't come up with. No. Uh, there's nothing. There's nothing definitive for us to make a decision. There's no. Yeah. There's nothing's linked. It, it's like he he pushes him, and there's blood. But like, how does he? How, yeah, how's he out of the chair? Right. Why Who, is he dead? Why is he dead? Are we supposed to believe he killed himself? That doesn't make sense. The no. guy hasn't wanted to die this whole time. Nope. Also, I thought it was a weird, not a weird choice necessarily. I actually kind of liked it uh, when he's telling Kolchak his story, and it turns out. Because like the whole time you're like maybe oh you, you feel a little bit of sympathy for him because he is mentally he's, ill he's clearly, he's clearly like yeah. crippled by mental illness, but it turns out 
Also, just an asshole murderer before yeah, that. Like, just a mean guy. He, he's just a bad person. Like, you got, he killed his grandparents because he was tired of their lip. Yep. Like, that's like not okay. Yeah, it's it's not a thing. It's like, yeah, every character is shades of gray, but yeah. this one is covered in blood and right. brains. <laughs> like, right, whatever. Uh, so then the cops show up. Kolchak is talking to her. He does like, doesn't say anything. He just kind of like, Stares off into the sunset, and she there's a voiceover from her about the fucking darkness, and it touches you. The whole if you look into the abyss, is it looking back? Who are you talking? Portion of it all. No fucking idea. <laughs> Harry, who are you speaking? To? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, how funny it be the cut to her, and she's just like staring out a window, saying yeah, yeah, loud, and like he's like moon. he can yeah he can like hear. It's like I'm still here. Like, yeah, yeah. Talking to no, it's just the re- she's just at her she's back at her party. Just a whole bunch of people. <laughs> yeah, she's-, <laughs> she's just in the corner of a room talking. <laughs> Man, that party got weird. <laughs> <laughs> And that's how fucking cold check ends. That's how it ends. That episode, I was so, I really was genuinely into. Yeah. Kind of into like the last five minutes. Like everything up until her get, so she gets shot, he freaks out or whatever. The moment she disappears, I was like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah. And then everything from there ruins the rest of the episode for me. Yeah, it's definitely, it's, it's, it's an interesting uh, episode because it, it is very different from the other ones where mm. it's just like him you know, interrogating this guy, but also getting interrogated and all this, like, shit. It's kind yeah, of yeah. like, uh, what what is that got? Misery or whatever. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's like so it's like this interesting thing where it's like, yeah, maybe not a lot, not a lot happens plot-wise, but this is a very interesting thing. And yeah, again, yeah. Kind this, of character study. Episode. Yeah, it's a character study written by Vince Gillian or Gill, whatever his name yeah, is. Yeah. And so you're like, yeah, this is this is interesting. And then at the end, it just gets dumb. And yeah. you're like, well, this is just for nothing. Absolutely. Uh, this is probably a dumb question. Do you recommend anybody to watch Night Stalker? Um... Here's the deal. If if I knew someone was interesting in, uh, interested in writing something, I'd be like, you should watch a couple episodes of this to kind of get like and be like, why? It, like the thing that I tell you know when you're doing stand up, if there's a newer comic and they ask for advice and shit, you're like, just look at someone doing bad and be like, why is this person doing why, bad? Yeah, why is this bad? Yeah, like yeah. why what is are this they bad? doing wrong? What is this person yeah. doing wrong? Can they salvage? Like what can they do to salvage? Is it unsalvageable? Shit like that. And then, uh, so I would, on, I mean, this probably sounds like I'm being mean, but if, if I knew someone was like, yeah, I'm trying to write procedurals and stuff like that, I'd be like, well, watch the show because it kind of blows. Yeah. And so then all the mistakes that they're making yeah, don't do that. It's yeah, not yeah, even yeah, just yeah. because it's written badly. It's it's like, or the dialogue's bad or whatever, the acting's bad. Because the acting's fine. fine. It's not, it's fine. It's fine yeah, for yeah, yeah. what it is. But it's like, you just have to look at it and be like, what are you doing wrong? Structurally, this show is wrong. Structurally, yeah, 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 it, yeah. it makes no – it's terrible. Right. <laughs> it's on a structure-wide like, uh, side of it. It's just yeah. nonsense. Uh, I, uh, what about you? I, I wouldn't even recommend people do that. I want this show to be put into a missile and launched into the sun. <laughs> I fucking hate this show so much. It made me mad. And I, <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> because of how oh, – partially because of how much I like the original Colchette. Yeah. And not that like, you know, I grew up. It's not some nostalgia, oh, you ruined my childhood thing. Sure. I didn't grow up on Colchette. But it was such a fun, good, interesting little show. And for them to take it and – it reflects everything that is wrong with like gritty remake culture, right? Yeah. Where the dark reboot. Not everything needs to be a dark reboot, and this is a prime example of why. You lost everything that made Kolchak fun by making it darker than it needs to be. It's already dark. It's about fucking mummies and shit. Yeah. So you don't need to also make it about a bunch of assholes. It just made me really mad. They did that with that Mortal Kombat. Uh, so do you remember a couple years ago, um, they did like this weird like five-minute – Short mm-hmm. movie that turned into like a series, I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. of Mortal Kombat with like Michael Jai White. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. They took an already dark thing, and what they did was instead of like, like they made it a little more darker, but they they added a whole thing of like detective work and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's the right way to if, you, if you're going to do a dark reboot, right. I feel like that's probably you the also right have way to do. change like more than just like you said. They added the detective work and all the other shit. You have to add more to it than just making it like darker and gross yeah. which is all they did to this was like make him be no fun at all and uh, yeah, an oddly yeah you're right an oddly gross show and then make it fucking gross yeah there was a point when network television just this i think decided we can't show titties so we're gonna go with gore yeah and like you ever watch bones yeah yeah i've watched a fair amount of bones 
It's just fucking gross. And actually, yeah. I kind of like Bones. It's a perfectly it's acceptable. Good. Yeah, it's fine. It's a perfectly fine, like, I'm in a hotel room. I'll watch nine yeah. episodes of this. I'm hungover. I'm going to watch nine episodes on TNT, right? It used to be on whenever, when I worked at the the, the tavern, 12th and Lamar, I would, uh, in the morning, like, the TVs would turn on and they'd all be on the show Bones. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That and Supernatural. And yeah, I would yeah, just, yeah, like, like, watch the, these right. shows and just be like, what the fuck is this? And so Bones is fine. Yeah. And it's like, but what? <laughs> I think they're able to get away with it because on the rest of it, it is kind of lighthearted. There's a lot of, like, office jokiness going yeah, on. Yeah. But then also there will be the most disgusting dead body you've yeah, ever seen, yeah, right? Yeah. That is what that show is. And this, like, it's got the most disgusting shit, but then every there's never a moment where you step away from it and go, oh, this part's, like, fun or there's bright there's out no here. Charm. There's no charm. So it's, you're just sitting in gross. With Kolchak, uh, the original Kolchak, there was so much charm to it, where it's like, even if it's like, yeah, it's a little hokey. Yeah, it's for sure hokey. But it's in the 70s, and then you're like, this is charming, and like, whatever. And this is just not. It's just gr- kind of gross. It's not It's not scary enough for you to be like, this is a scary show. It doesn't show. work as a and scary show. And it's not charming show. enough to be like, this is kind of interesting. And it doesn't work as like a procedural, because none of the mysteries are well told. So like, it kind of fails on every level. Yeah, don't don't watch Holt. Unless you're going to listen to this podcast and yeah skim through some episodes yeah. to see what we're talking about but otherwise uh, it don't watch that show yeah uh anything you want to plug uh man just follow me on twitter at pat dean i got a bunch of stuff happening next week i don't remember what any of it is so <laughs> just follow him on that uh at pat dean on twitter yes. i'm at chris cubis on all social media we're doing john from cincinnati next and here's a little spoiler alert i've watched two episodes and i fucking love it i think i see it i think i saw you post about that. it's really good yeah. it's like weird and and there's a lot of magic I wasn't expecting, but like it's a good show. And there's I'm magic in the show. Talk. There's a fair amount. Yeah. Oh yeah, wow, yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. And in a, it, there's magical shit happening. Okay. Um. But yeah, I I'm very excited to watch John Cincinnati. I'm talking. I'm watching it uh, with Brett Vervoort. Super. She's having a. She's like great guest. So we've cool. got one episode in the can. So we'll definitely come. Uh, Check out uh, John from Cincinnati. It's on Amazon Prime. It's also on like the HBO shit and whatever. Uh. Canceled is produced by Mike Moody at the Permanent Record Studios in Austin, Texas. I'll say it again. Record your podcast here. It's fucking great. It rules. It's fucking really good. Yeah. Um, I don't like the staircase. You have to walk up nine flights of stairs to get here, but otherwise, it's fucking awesome. Yeah. It's literally great. I've been in a 35-year struggle against stairs. Yeah, myself, yeah. It's not so. the studio's fault. It's mine for not being good at stairs. <laughs> yeah, it's us. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm fat. It's not their fault. Yeah, it's a cool studio, and they have, uh, I think they have beer and yeah. water. Yeah, it's really good. So if you, if you want beer... Come here. I guess. There's no I other guess. place to There's get beer no in the city. no other place in town. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye.